Okay, so what makes a good demo? The design, the pitfalls, and more importantly, why did I agree to do this in the first place? Which if, if you've ever done a demo, you're asking yourself that daily, especially if you're not volunteered by your manager. So who am I? Not as good as new phone who dis, but uh, still. Um, so I am an open embedded board member and formerly on the TSC. Um, I've been employed by ARM since 2018. And just gen generally, but especially in this case, I am not speaking for my employer in any way. Uh, all the opinions I make now in this outside are my own. Uh, don't get me fired. Um, I co-maintain MetaArm with Ross in the back. And I've been doing Linux kernel stuff uh, for a very long time. I won't even tell you which dot version, but, uh, because it'll show how old I am. OK, so uh, des uh, design decisions. Like, so when you're doing a demo, generically, what are you trying to show off? What's your intended audience? I'm really going to read these points. It's, it's going to be terrible. Uh, what's your desired outcome? And is there something already in existence you could take advantage of? And what is your time frame? That's the most important question. And I'm going to use this demo that everyone hopefully had a chance to come down and look at as the example. So firstly, what are you trying to show off? Are you trying to show off a big thing or a little thing? For example, if I'm just trying to show off this controller, then the, the demo should change significantly versus trying to show off an entire build system or a binary reference distribution. So who's your audience? Really, who's going to see it? And how do you get their attention? So this demo was for FOSDEM. So trying to get the attention of a bunch of nerds walking around a, uni a university that paid nothing to get in, that's a very high and low barrier. And also, how do you get their attention? So if you went around to many booths, you saw people giving out stickers and T-shirts and all that stuff. And free stuff definitely gets attention. But also things blowing up. And a little bit of nostalgia. Like, you know, someone was asking, how old is this game? It's approaching 30 years. I don't know exactly when it came. 30. December it, was the anniversary. Okay, so it is 30. So some of us are that old where this is nostalgia. We played this as when we were kids or teenagers. And you might get that little bit of nostalgia. And what is your desired outcome? You want buy-in. We wanted buy-in. We want people to walk by the booth, oh, that's cool, and interact. Because if you've worked a uh, Yocto or open embedded booth or just a booth for your company, it's really like, like you, you want the interaction. You want them to come. You, you need the, or otherwise, you're just, one, you're standing there and just bored. Like, like even if someone's talking about something uh, like irrelevant, just talk to me in the booth because I'm so bored. This gives you something for them to interact. It gives you a cause, a raison d'etre, I don't know. And this is the most important thing, and that's why it's only this bullet, the time frame. Because if you have a week to get something done, it's very different than if you have a year. And if you can only dedicate a week over a year, it's very different. And your outcome will be something like this, or it could be something fantastic, like you know, I don't know, something good. <laughs> um, and this is very good. Is there something already existing that you can take advantage of, especially if you have a short time frame? You know, if you have a year and all the time in the world, you could write something dedicated that would show off every little nuance of the project. Or if someone's done the majority of the work and you can just glom onto it and, you know, claim it as your own and not give them any credit, and then tell your bosses how great you are. I mean, I'm not saying that happened. OK, so an implement, implementation decision. Do you have access to hardware already in existence? Or it could be something you're trying to show off if you're showing off a BSP or something like that that your company made. Um, but do you need to buy extra stuff? Do you need to buy a controller? Do you need to buy a screen? Do you need to 3D print some stands? Like, this will come from Amazon in the US for in a day or two. But if you're trying to show it in a, another place, you might not have that amount of time. Um, does it work? And if not, can you get it working in time? So 
if you had, let's just say, you know, we're all embedded nerds of some kind. Let's just say you had an Orange Pi 5, and you're like, oh, cool. Let me see if I can get that working. Um, yeah, there's not a layer that supports it. Um, you think you can add a layer, and you think it'll only take a couple of days, and you were wrong. And then, uh, you know, so th then you've got it mostly working, and, but except for the graphics aren't working. I'm not saying I burned all kinds of time trying random BSPs that I have in my house, but um, back to the time frame. What can look like a couple months can easily get burned by you trying to be cool with random hardware you have laying around versus buying a la potato that someone else might have already gotten working, like Joshua. Yes, and, and to the point, how to get their attention. You know, this is nice and interactive. People want to do it. You know, uh, Joseph was saying, you can come kill your friends. Um, you know, not literally. Not literally. I, I shouted that at a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> but this being interactive does get more buy-in. Uh, free stuff, I mean, we've all gone to a booth and gotten a free sticker or free T-shirt. Apparently, nowadays, stickers are better than business cards because people were at the booth taking stickers and going, I'm taking the sticker so I can Google it later and putting it in their pocket. So, I mean, that was kind of a cool thing to learn. Yeah. Okay, so importantly, testing. Verify the thing works. All of it. Really, every single part. So, this Raspberry Pi, some people looked, but do you know what this is and why it's plugged in? The screen won't turn on unless it detects a mouse. So that's a, a USB mouse dongle. You don't see a mouse, do you? It just needs to think that there's a mouse, mouse plugged in for it to start. Um, there can be a lot of different things, because I have other boards that have different problems. So uh, this is a Pine 64, nice 10-year-old board, maybe even older than that. So this board is cool. Why am I not showing it off here? Because it's something that Joshua hasn't shown off in his Doom layer. It works, except for it doesn't work with a controller, right? Like all the pieces. So I have a Raspberry Pi 4 at home. Why, is, why did I not bring that? That's newer and cooler and even more unique hardware. Well, this screen doesn't work with the Raspberry Pi 4, right? So test all of it, really everything. So we did an alpha version of this in Prague, and I just brought everything, and we were just cobbling together trying to find combinations of things that work, and we had a different screen. And it works on that screen. So it's not like it doesn't work. The screen works, just not this one. It's $50, I can't complain, but you know, with design decisions, maybe if I had an infinite budget, I could be more clever. So transportation to uh, the location. So this little backpack seems like a really good idea because I could fit all the crap in here. Um, you, you need to take that through your airport security. All these electronics might get looked at extra hard. Now, luckily, they didn't care. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they let me through. But I already have a backpack. So I was, uh, I don't know if you know, a baby Bjorn, like the little thing where you carry the baby in front of you. So I have a backpack on the front and the back. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> and also, like a pregnant woman, I can't see my feet. So I'm stepping down and trying not to follow my face. Don't do that. That it was a good idea. and. Uh, only by half, clever by half, right? And so another question is, is this a good demo? It's showing off something, but is it showing it off in the best way? I, I don't know, it's, it's a way, and it was expedient, but is it good? I mean, I think it's a B, I mean, like, I think it's, in my opinion, B, but like maybe some of you see it and go, kind of amateurish. Or maybe you see it and say, this game is violent. I don't want people to see that. Someone actually, when we showed it off in Prague, was like, can you not do something with guns? As an American, it doesn't bother me, but maybe as Europeans, it's <laughs> kind of a problem, right? Or maybe in uh, the Czech Republic, it's OK, right? Because guns are, are, are fine there, I think. Again, you've got to know your audience. Yeah, and if this was something more professional, th this might be kind of not cool. 
So acknowledgments. I did want to thank Josh Watt for for helping me in many ways, and you know, I, I think a couple of days ago I'm like, this thing isn't working. And he's like, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave me lots of help, you know, some advice, and uh, you know, even recommended it. So lots of. When I made the slide, I'm like, Josh is never going to see this, and I think Ross is like, oh yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> so thank you. Questions, comments? If you want. <laughs> and if there are none, you can come down here and play until it locks up. So, do you think having an interactive, do you think having an interactive thing like that, you get people parking at the booth for longer and not getting as many views? Did you want to comment on that? I, I thought it was like perfect because people would come and they'd play for a couple minutes. You'd get time to explain what was going on and then they'd leave. Like there were only, the only people who, when I was there, that were like camping and sitting there was that little kid at the end of the day when everything was getting <laughs> torn down, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it was, I thought it was really good as far as like the amount of time people stayed at the booth. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too long and it wasn't too short, right? Mm -hmm. It was just, I thought it was really good. But who, who else manned the booth? It definitely drew people. Yeah, yeah, it definitely drew people and there were tons of like people that were like, oh, I played that when I was a kid and that was great. Um, but yeah, I, I thought timing wise, I think that's perfect. Anecdotally, compared to the foot traffic of last year, where it's difficult to compare, I thought we got better foot traffic, we got better questions, yeah, um, and people did stick around longer. And I mean that that little girl was having a blast. Yeah, she was like helping people learn how to reset their character so she can kill them again. Yeah, <laughs> she she got really good at the end. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, maybe move a little towards the home assistant and uh, uh, watching things at home. Uh, mm -hmm. That seems sort of popular. Maybe could also be popular in the Yokto environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, AGL has some fantastic uh, demos that they show off. Um, you know, it's kind of unique for them. We were getting lots of people stopping by saying, how does Doom have to do with AGL? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I mean, a lot of learning lessons did occur, um, but yeah, I think it was okay. You can build our demos. <laughs> <laughs> you can build this layer. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that was, it was, it took explaining to explain why we did the demo, because like, it was like, oh, it's playing Doom, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, the point is that it's playing Doom on a bunch of different devices. Um, and then the other thing was we forgot to print off instructions on how to play. <laughs> or how to get the layers. Yeah, we, yeah we, we did not have enough like instructions on how, like what this was and how it was supposed to work. Um, once you explained it to people, they were like, oh, that's cool, like you're running it on all those mm -hmm. platforms, right? Um, but uh, yeah, and once you showed them the controls, they figured it out. But, so could so a general question, what could be a, a better demo? What, if you were walking by, would get your attention and make you want to ask questions? I mean, the other question I have is, uh, when I'm explaining in the demo, I'm explaining the software stack is Doom, and that can be your custom work, and the hardware is your hardware is evolving with time, so the incremental re-engineering to add mm -hmm. new platforms is lower because you're using Open Embedded in the Octo project, and any more ideas on how we can uh, convince people to use build systems to build embedded Linux distributions? Um, you know, how do we explain this to people who don't really understand why we go to all this trouble? So if anyone has any ideas on that, I'd love to hear them. It's not like purely related to Yocto, but if you were to show Yocto in combination with like an AB like updater system where you had a demo where you could like, I know the embedded Linux people had, not the embedded Linux, sorry, the automotive grade Linux people had something similar where it would reboot it into a different container to show a different app. But I saw, I think the Rarik or Rarik, I don't know how you pronounce it, 
uh, at the Linux conference had a demo showing like the thing constantly downloading and reflashing updates and bringing the whole thing up. If you were to do that in combination with different layers or different images booting into different games like on demand, it would show like a benefit of that kind of build system over you know normal Linux distros and the traditional apt kind of update mechanism that might be new to people. Uh. I'm not sure if it is intentional, but I think it should be more prominent that it is different hardware. Yeah. Like, uh, also, it is like I've been to several stands also at FOSDAM, and you're like, ask. Of course, it it sparks also a conversation. You shouldn't maybe put a whole sign, and people are only reading and are quiet. But uh, like, for example, showing that it's different hardware and it's all the same code base, mm -hmm. because this is different. Like, especially in the embedded world, where you have like some ugly BSPs or something. Soon all comes from the uh, uh, binary feed, right? You had one trigger word there. You can discuss it later. Um, but one, one challenge with demoing in such a diverse group and to such a, an, a resulting diverse group is uh, what to show that um, does represent the people involved and does not over represent one particular contributor or company. For example, um, al alone in this room, I know of at least three, I would say, combinations where direct contributors are involved. And so if one of them says, like, oh, I want to demo this at, at OE, um, is it good because you get a good demo or is it bad because the guy sitting next to you says, hey, I could have done that too. Why does he get uh, the, the real estate there? And that, that's why we are um, very careful about showcasing things that would, in, uh, that, would, uh, that would involve like, l l let's say, marketing for a specific vendor or company or something. And Doom is just like, nobody of us here makes a single penny on Doom. There, therefore, it's not exactly critical. Hardware, again, would, would already be a little bit more touchy, but we're showing a big variety. We're showing x86. We're showing ARMS from different vendors. And so that it gets around that a little bit. But um, I agree that showcasing something that a developer would use in their daily life might be nice, but um, if it's something that is a, an actual real product or uh, project or whatever, then the question would be why should OE show it and not those people themselves? If they want marketing, then please do it yourselves or pay for it. Yeah. OE is not here to do, to do your sales. Yeah, that, and, and that includes myself too. I and, think I've always been very clear about that. And, and to your point, I don't think uh, mm -hmm. um, Yocto Project could do this because they would be representing one or more vendors. And I'm not saying this is true, but perhaps TI, who is a platinum member still maybe? I, I don't know what, but, but th they're a member and they make boards like the Beagle. And they're like, why didn't you use Beagle? Why didn't you only use Beagle? Like, exactly. It, and it's a problem. Very, very same topic. Um, the Octo Project hat on, we are just planning uh, the booth for Embedded World. And there, the call is absolutely clear. If you are a member, do you want to donate a demo and or a person to, to, to showcase it, then you are welcome to show up at the booth. If you're not a member, sorry, no demo for you. Just a small addition to highlight the different hardware. Uh, I've been at the booth um, in Prague. Um, we do tell people that there's like essentially one layer different for different hardware. Maybe it's worth to visualize that and highlight, okay, have a display showing the machine configuration. Mm -hmm. That's how it differs one from another. So yeah. people can get better understanding of what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever it's just like a just to yeah, like a printout or a graphic yeah. or something that's like, look, we this is Metadoom on top of all mm -hmm. these different BSPs. Right. 
yeah, the, I, at the booth I was trying to visualize it with waving hands, and I'm sure it did. <laughs> it didn't help at all, did that it? Doesn't break at all. Yeah. Or, or just the little slideshow machine. Mm-hmm. This is like a big change machine. Yeah, it's it's too. And the slideshow, of course, is the demo. I mean, I mean you, ha you have to use Open Embedded to build the machine that's running the slideshow. Anyone else nope. have insights into demos? Or ideas for future demos? Or, yeah. Definitely open for improvement, even if it's chucking this all away and starting fresh. I mean, no, the other game alternate would be Tux Racer, which I think we will probably put Yeah. <laughs> Joshua had a comment. Yeah, Tux Racer would be a good one. Or uh, is it Tux Racer? Yeah. Um, I think the tricky one there is like how I, I don't know anything about it, so hopefully you can set it up to be like a short race because yeah. otherwise you'll get well, people uh, sticking around at the booth for a while. And, long and time. part of the draw is the interactivity with right. multiple players. With Tux Racer, I don't know if you can do multiplayer. I'm fairly certain. You can? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Super yeah. Tux Kart. Yeah, there Super Tux. Yeah, that was the one yeah. I was thinking of. Super Tux Kart, right. And the other suggestion I would have is improved cable management. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. It was fine. I, I did bring Velcro straps, but as always, the rush to get it thrown up is, uh, trumps everything else. You get what you pay for. I have some bits and pieces we can try and make shorter HDMI cables. Are you going to splice it? Uh, they crimp on ends of wires. I'll look at them and send you pictures of what I have. Last time I was excited about demos pre-plague, I ordered some random bits to try and work on the cable management issues. Cool, cool. Of course, I was using boxes to lean screens against. Yeah, having a 3D printer is nice. Anyway, if there's nothing else, thank you.